Well, howdy. Uh, we are having a second cup of coffee chat this morning with uh, Mario Villarino, who yes. is our Hopkins County AgriLife agent. to be here with you guys, like always. Agent Well, thank you for, for coming. And uh, we avidly uh, follow uh, Mario's uh, news releases and, and uh, uh, information that, that he sends out. And uh, we talked about this maybe briefly last time. I don't know if that was on the air or not, but we talked about army worms very briefly. Yes. But that's now something that we need to be very mindful. Yes, and of. It's, it's part of the nature of the of the, the time of the year. You know, they're called fall army worms. And that when the temperatures drop and that humidity spikes a little bit, you start seeing hatchings uh, of those, these buggers. And <laughs> it's important that this, this, uh, people are aware audience is aware of them and where they are and start looking after them so it's we'll see them when the weather turns cooler that is correct and stays cooler maybe for, for that is more correct. than just and a, a couple what, of days uh, we were, we're talking about the odds you know throughout the state and it's usually a, a, a front a cold front that comes in yeah. and it pulls away and change the conditions so what we really want people to start monitoring their crops the fields looking for them Make sure they don't last too long, and then probably take measures after that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, depending on how the weather conditions look, the temperatures are increasing again, going right. back to our high temperatures. Hopefully, that will take care of that, that uh, the little outbreaks here and there. But people need to be aware they're there and get prepared for that. And, and you mentioned crops, but of course they are a threat to lawns. Sure, I mean as I, well. In general, is is for anything that is green. <laughs> depending how severe the drought is, you know, I have seen them, and I was talking to somebody where they found that. I've seen even pea country has been devastated oh by army worm. Yeah. So there's no particular reason to think they'll be worse this year than... No. Uh, no, it's just the normal pattern they do. I see. Uh, and when we have hot weather, you know, those eggs are being, being laid off. And just like every other insect, you know, these, these guys work with numbers. That's the mechanics of uh, insects. You know, they will put as many babies as they can just to hopefully somebody make it. So you'll see the temperature dropping and that humidity increasing, and that will make those eggs hatch. And if you see, if you start to see them, um, what insecticide or what, what is the... Well, depending on the conditions, and uh, every case will be different, depending on what, what is grazing in that place. But uh, general uh, insecticide for a lawn will work, you know, because they're not really hard to kill. Mm -hmm. it's just try, the timing is what is critical. Mm -hmm. The timing when they're small, you know, it's obviously more, more uh, susceptible to being killed by a chemical. And of course, there's some products who are aiming at the molting stage. There are a couple of products out there that they will, they will kill the caterpillar when they're changing from one stage to another one. And that will not work if you're looking for an adult stage. So people need to be fully aware the products are different, and especially the conditions of the rain. Uh, some products are actually more tolerant uh, when it's raining or not. Mm. So it's important that they call us in the office, you know, give us a call and let us know what your situation is because even when they have animals in lactation, that's important. I was about to say... Uh, yeah, do, they, not, do not make something... There's not a, a, a do for all. So people, we, need, we want to know. People can give you, you a call. And Absolutely. And, and that's, I, that's what we've been dealing with lately. And I imagine there's a lot of information on the AgriLife uh, it is. website. Uh, it is. But even then, you know, when you start looking at your resources, some of those blanket statements can be a little different depending on what you're dealing with. So uh, if you're in a hay meadow, it's going to be very different when you have a pasture land and you have baby cows. It's going to be very okay. different, and so dairy cattle. It's going to, to be, be different. concerned about the animals yeah, that are absolutely. in the area. Okay, Super, and yourself too, depending how. And I was talking uh, to uh, somebody where they found that some of these products are, are very aggressive on the skin, especially the ones that are very effective. They could be very, you know, caustic for the skin Irritating. or the applicator. So uh -huh. uh, if you don't have the right equipment, you might uh -huh. avoid using that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about 4-H, uh, and we, we have maybe a couple of minutes or so left here. You put out a news release about 4-H recently. Now, Lisa Sprague, who, who headed that up for your office, uh, went— She is actually in Delta County. Delta County. We, we are excited about that. She's right. uh, taking an opportunity in Cooper now, and yeah. on her own. Uh, she is uh, in that office now, but we keep— uh, 
moving our uh, clubs in place, and is it time to en enroll again? That's what I was about to say. So now is the time for this kids. This is the time to, to start getting it done. To get yes. involved. Uh, September 1st is when the official year starts, but we have a lot of activities in the fall. We want our kids to make sure that they take the most benefit of that and make sure they're enrolled so we can communicate with them. Mm -hmm. The enrollment is, it happens every year, uh, and it starts September 1st. So we want to make sure that everybody that is going to be joining 4-H, they do it now, and, and they take the full opportunity the whole year. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though Lisa has, has moved on, the, the, those uh, activities, those programs will continue there, this Some fall? of them will. As, as she had a, a very specific uh, subset of activities with the kids, and she will continue doing that until the November deadline of the, of the activities are over. And then we'll find another leader to continue that. So, it's, oh, so she's still involved. With she's involved. Yeah, kids she was in, there in, in the, oh, Hopkins yes. County. Yes, she was gonna. She uh, offered the, the the services until that project. Oh, good. So we're in a friendly situation with them, so it's it's, it's not that. Uh, I see. I see. I see. So, uh, any idea how many kids in 4-H in Hopkins County? Last year County? we had 371. Our good enrollment heavens. was in in clubs and and whatnot. In projects, we have 66 in agriculture, and we have 900 kids in. Uh, school enrichment now they make the 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 4-h materials available at school they don't they don't actually that's one of those things they're available online oh uh, and that's what uh, one of the flexibilities that we have is actually that we can tailor those projects to their needs according to their their circumstances so people should go online and search Absolutely. this this out for mm -hmm. hopkins county 4-h then especially they're going to be competitive um, events some what? of them are like shooting sports one of the more most common pr projects is archery. Those projects actually require to have a train trainer that actually comes okay. and do the activity with them. Right. So right. you let us know. It's the same it is for livestock projects. You have a certain sequence that you have to follow. Yeah, to we're, fit it. we're basically out of time. But but at what age does 4-H start? We, we go all the way from third grade all the way to high school. Right. We third grade they start. Yes, you started at the third grade all the way to high school. Very good. So that's what is different for every family and every single 4 Yeah, yeah, good. Mario, thanks for having a second cup of coffee with us again. Mario Villarino, our Hopkins County Ag agent, and uh, uh, I'm John Mark Dempsey. This is KSST. Thank you for having me. Thank you.